everybody. So sometimes I think with doing exercises like summary, paraphrasing, and quotation, one of the best things that I can do is sort of show you how to assemble these things. Um, one of the things that's nice about summary writing is that there is almost a formula. There are very clear expectations of how you want to create um, something like a summary, how I want you to show that you can quote, how that I, how I want you to show paraphrasing. So this assignment um, is a little bit, I think, easier because it is structured. So in this video, I just want to show you how you can structure it and some of the tips and tricks that you can use to get a strong summary um, and to get everything you need into your quotes and your paraphrases. So um, I've taken the original document that you guys had and I've added some of in red, some pieces of advice that I would like you to follow and use almost as like a checklist as you complete this exercise. And I'm going to complete it in this video um, so that you have examples. And then I'll post this document for you. So I um, am gonna do the article that I did the annotation practice on because I approved it as the instructor. I said, okay, I can do this. So I'm gonna be um, taking this article and I'm gonna be summarizing it. So I'm gonna start with that, with summary. If you look um, at these kind of instructions that I've included for you about summary, the first thing it says is to start your summary with a sentence that gives rhetorical information and end it with a summary of the article's main idea. So your first sentence, anytime you write a summary, should start with rhetorical information, like the author, the publication year, the title name, the source name, the genre, things like that. And it should end with a main idea, with the article's over overall statement. So in this case, I'm going to have my article up and I'm going to look for rhetorical information that I want to include. Okay, so I want to get the article, I want to get the publication date, probably the source name, and definitely the author's names in there. So in blue, I'm just going to start writing this summary. Um, there we go. Okay. Um, and I'm going to start with in the article. That's kind of one of the most common uh, ways to start a summary sentence. Once I write this sentence, you can use it as a model, but you don't have to write it exactly like I do. You can create it in any kind of um, construction you want, as long as you get that rhetorical information in there and as long as it's a complete sentence. Sometimes people will say in the article, thousands of, you know, they'll include the article in the article title and then it'll just be a period. That's a sentence fragment. We need to continue it so that it has a subject and a verb and it ends with the main idea in the article, and I'm going to copy and paste it because I'm lazy. And also that helps me to get from getting any typos. And then I will obviously go back. Anytime you cut and paste, you always want to make sure um, that you're putting it back into, um, I'm going to put it in Times New Roman because I like Times New Roman. Uh, you're going to make sure that the font is all in the same font family. It's all in the same uh, size and it is all in the same color. In the article, thousands of New York healthcare workers get vaccinated ahead of deadline. Okay, so I put that in there. Um, for article titles, they are actually going to go in quotation marks. So I'm going to take it out of italics and I'm going to put it in quotation marks. And you know what? Um, I'm actually going to include the source name. The name of the publication goes in italics in the New York Times article. Um, and I'm gonna get really fancy. I'm going to include the author's names. Okay, and so there's my main idea right there. 
Um, what is this talking about? Um, the impact of the coronavirus vaccine mandates for healthcare workers in the state of New York. So in this case, I've actually included, I'm going to, maybe I'll um, amend this a little bit. Because um, you could also summarize the topic here. You could give just a brief idea of the topic, because I haven't really explained what the article ultimately says. I think in this case, I'm going to save that for my conclusion. But you can see right here that this basically gives the um, the idea to the reader of what this is going to be about. So this is a good sentence to start my paper with. So I've started my summary like I was. Okay, so step number two, include only the major, most important details. So I already made a list of that offline. So I'm just going to pull up the document. You guys can do the exact same thing I did. I went through the article and read it, and I made bullet points of all of the things that I thought were important to include. Now, if you look at this article, this is the actual article. Do you see all these numbers and names and places? We've got people. We've got specific um, names of hospital systems. Uh, we've got lots of numbers. We've got lots of different directors being talked about. We've got lots of different places being named. I'm not going to get into any of those details. If you look on this, you can see, um, I do talk about the National Guard, but you're not seeing things like... Um, you know, like Syracuse, you're not seeing things like Kathleen Petrillo, you're not seeing, or Perinello, you're not seeing the actual names being written in these details, because this is just a major, a list of the major ideas that I want to put, the things that I think are the most important points that I want to put in the summary. Um, so I made my bullet pointed list, and I'm just going to cut and paste it right in here. Um, some of them are complete sentences. Some of them are just ideas. I'm going to try and turn them all into complete sentences. So I'm going to say in New York. Oh, I don't know why that did that. Yep. Okay. Okay, this is not a complete sentence. This is not a complete sentence either, so I'm going to fix that. The article looks at the impacts across various systems in hospitals. Um, Okay, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to read this and I'm going to make sure that it actually makes sense and, rep and get rid of any repetition. So I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say, okay, uh, discuss the impact of the coronavirus mandates for healthcare workers in the state of New York. Um, so this kind of repeats the other sentence. So I'm just going to get rid of that. See what I'm doing? I'm just like editing as I go. People are, people's a little bit vague. So um, we're going to say officials were worried that it would cause a massive shortage. The governor of New York declared a state of emergency ahead of mandates in case she needed to call in the National Guard to assist. Currently, protests are taking place across the state. The article looks at the impacts across various. Okay, so I've got lots of acrosses happening here. Um, so we're going to say within various systems and hospitals. Um, and I'm going to maybe make that a little more specific. Hospital systems and nursing homes across, um, I'll say throughout, throughout the entire state. Um, and so I said that instead of listing places, like they talk to, to people in Rochester and Buffalo, um, in Long Island, I'm just going to say, I'm going to generalize that. Um, and interviews, New Yorkers working within the health field. Yep. Um, I'm going to say thus far. It seems that more people are choosing to vaccinate instead of quit their 
jobs. Vaccination rates are seeing a significant uptick as a result. Okay, so I've got all these sentences. If I look back at number three, uh, number three says, do not include quotes. I do, have not quoted anything in here. I don't want to get that specific in my summary. And then it says to add attributive tags, um, like according to, the text explains. Um, and I've actually made a list or a chart um, that can help us out here. So this chart um, is sort of like a mix and match that we've got going on. These are different ways that you can create what we call attributive tags. Attributive tags give the author, I'm sorry, give the reader an idea that this is not, all of these words are not coming from me and my observations. They're all coming from the original article. So I'm actually gonna go back and add one to every sentence of my summary, but to avoid repetition, I'm gonna mix them up. Um, so I'm gonna say, let's do the article reports. the article reports that officials were worried. Let's see how to get one in here. According to Otterman and Goldstein, <laughs> I'm going to add this one at the end. Maybe not. Maybe I'm going to skip that one. I already have the article right here. We'll say they. Uh, because we started here saying, according to Otterman and Goldstein, the governor of New York declared a state of emergency ahead of mandates in case she needed to call in the National Guard to assist. I'm actually going to say the authors explain. currently. Protests are taking place across the state. Uh, the article, I've already got one there. And then um, <laughs> the news story indicates that thus far, more people are choosing to vaccine, vaccinate instead of quit their jobs. The authors conclude by showing vaccination rates are seeing a significant uptick as a result. And then, uh, so this one, I use the word conclude because this is my concluding sentence. Um, so now I'm going to go back and I'm going to look. So I added attributive tags to every sentence in my summary. Uh, it's only a single paragraph long. It is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sentences. And that's it. That's my, that's, there it is. There's my lovely summary. And that part is done.